So Sarah, what familiar song are we going to do today for worship? Well, actually, Kristen, we're going to do a new song. What? Yeah. Okay, my friends. So you are going to learn about your Bible story today and your memory verse. And this song is going to go along with today's memory verse. So, yeah. Super cool, right? Yeah. I love how I can sing things and remember them better when I sing them. I like so that's what that. we're going to do. So will you please... Stand up and learn this new song with us today. Yeah. of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible? Well, it is, and I hope you remembered that. And this week, we are going to be in the second book of the Bible. Does anybody know what the second book of the Bible is called? Exodus, right. So we are going to be in the book of Exodus this week. And we're going to zoom really close and look at some things in the book of Exodus, but we're also going to zoom far out and look at an overview of the book of Exodus and see what we can learn about God through this book. So, before we zoom in and out of the book of Exodus, does anybody know what Exodus means? Well, the word Exodus kind of means what it sounds like. It means to exit or to leave. So, this makes sense because the book of Exodus actually has the biggest, most spectacular exit that the world has ever known. And here's the fun part. We're going to play a little game as we go through the book of Exodus today. And if you were with us last week, you may remember. But as we go, eventually I'm going to show you a picture. And it's going to zoom out little by little. And you're going to try and guess what that picture is until eventually you're going to see the whole picture. So, when you know what it is, just go ahead and shout out what you think it is. 
All right. So, well, here we go. We're just going to start. Are you ready for our first round of Zoom? What was it? A brick. You're right. So last week we talked about how the Israelites had moved into Egypt and to escape the famine and to find food. But after being in Egypt for 40 years, the Israelites family began to grow into a huge, huge people. And the new Pharaoh, well, he was scared that they were becoming way too powerful. And so what he did is he made them all slaves and he forced them to work all day long and they would make bricks and build buildings. It was terrible. All right, are you ready for the next round? Moses and he was taking care of his sheep when he saw a bush and it was on fire but the weird thing was that the bush that was on fire it wasn't burning up and so Moses went a little closer to check it out and God spoke to him through this burning bush and he told Moses go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go and even though Moses was totally scared he agreed to do it Okay, are we ready for the next round? my friends. So when Moses told Pharaoh to let the Israelites go, Pharaoh just laughed and said, no way, dude, I'm not letting your people go. So what God did was send 10 terrible plagues to destroy Egypt. And for one of the plagues, he sent frogs and he made frogs cover the whole land. Gross, right? Well, we learned about this a little bit last year. Does anybody remember what some of the other plagues were? Hmm. Well, let's walk through them. So there was water that turned into blood and they was gnats and then there was flies, all these flies. And then all the livestock died, like the cows and everything, they died. And then there was boils and everybody had these sores on them. And then it hailed, which do you know what hail is? It's not fun. And then there was locusts, little bugs that came and ate everything. And then there was darkness. It was all dark, all day. And even though all of these plagues had almost destroyed Egypt, Pharaoh still would not let the Israelites go. So God sent one last horrible plague and the oldest son of every Egyptian family died. So when Pharaoh saw that that had happened, he finally let God's people go. Okay, are you ready for our next round of Zoom? What was it? 
money, right? So, on their way out of Egypt, God caused the Egyptian people to give the Israelites all of their silver and gold. But then, Pharaoh changed his mind about letting the Israelites go, and he sent his soldiers to chase the Israelites all the way to the Red Sea. And it looked like the Israelites were going to be in big trouble because the soldiers were chasing them. But then, do you know what God did? He divided the Red Sea, divided the whole sea, so that the people, the Israelites, could walk across the sea on dry ground. But when the Israelites were chasing after them, the water crashed back down and destroyed all of the Egyptian soldiers. All right, here is our final Zoom video. Let's see what you can do. Great job, guys. So on the other side of the Red Sea, the Israelites had to travel through a hot desert. But when they needed food, God made manna and quail fall from the sky. Whoa! Cool. Hmm. Well, it was manna, and this is bread. But manna and bread are kind of similar. And then, when they needed water, God caused water to come out of a rock. So, I'm not really out of this water bottle. But that was pretty cool that water came out of the rocks when they needed it. <laughs> and then, when they needed direction, God gave them direction with a pillar of fire. And this pillar of fire would guide them along the way. And there was also a pillar of smoke. When they needed rules, God gave them the Ten Commandments to follow. God gave the Israelites everything that they needed. But you know what they did? They complained. They still complained even though God gave them food and water and direction and rules. And so God made the Israelites wander around the desert for 40 years. Whew, 40 years walking around a desert. Now that is a long trip. Have you ever noticed what it would take and all the things that you would need to go on a long trip? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have my backpack here and you know, when you go on a long trip, you you need some money because you got to be able to pay for things on long trips. And then, hmm, let me see, what else do I have in here? Oh, a map. Because when you're going on a long trip, you have to know where you're going. Wow, that's a big map. And then, you also need food when you go on long trips. You got to make sure you can eat so that you can stay alive. God provided everything they needed. And in the book of Exodus, just like I had just told you, he provided them food when they needed food. He provided them water when they needed water. He provided them with someone to guide them and lead them. And how did he do this? So he provided them food from the sky and water from the rocks. He provided them money by causing the Egyptians to give them all their gold and silver before they left Egypt. And he provided direction with the pillar of smoke and the pillar of fire. And then he also provided them with a guide because he gave them Moses to lead them. So we're gonna add this graphic to our timeline, can you think about what else 
God might have provided to the Israelites. So we talked about money and food and direction, but what else do you think God provided? Well, he provided a way for them um, to get out of Egypt by sending all those plagues. And he provided a way through the Red Sea. How cool is that? He also provided the Ten Commandments so that they could follow and they could know how to follow him. The book of Exodus shows us that God has power to provide all of our needs. And in fact, that is our Bible memory verse for this week. And it's found in Philippians 4, 19. And God will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Okay, so if you want to stand up with me, friends, we have some motions for this, and we're going to learn them. So, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 19. Good job, my friends. Remember, it's very, very important that we learn our Bible verses. That's so fun and it's so good. So, how many of your needs will God meet? Do you know? All of your needs. Isn't that amazing? God has the power to provide all that we need so we can trust him because he will provide for us. He, will, he provides for our physical needs by giving us food and shelter. He provides for our relational needs because he gives us friends and family. Friends and family are pretty great. And he provides for our emotional needs by giving us strength and courage. But best of all, God provides for our spiritual needs by giving us Jesus. So in the same way that God helped the Israelites escape from Egypt and lead them to an amazing new home that was called the Promised Land, God has helped us escape from sin and he's going to lead us to an amazing new home called heaven. And we get to be there someday. Because of Jesus, we can live with God forever. So let's take a look at our big idea for this week. Our big idea is God has the power to provide so we can trust him and that he will give us all that we need. Okay, that's kind of a long one, but can you turn to someone in your family and say that with me? God has the power to provide, so we can trust that he will give us all that we need. All right, my friends, we're going to pray and we're going to thank him for that. Dear God, thank you so much that you provide for us. Lord, I think sometimes it's so easy to complain because we don't have everything maybe that we want. Lord, but I pray that we would just realize how much you have given us. I pray that we would remember the Israelites and all of that story and how God brought them out of Egypt and saved them from that and provided for them their food and their water and their money and everything that they needed. And God, in the same way, you will provide for us. And so I thank you for that and I pray that we would remember that you are always trustworthy and you will always provide. Amen. Okay, my friends, so after this video, you have a chance to discuss with your family our big story questions. And those are, what was your favorite part of the book of Exodus? So you'll have to be thinking about that. And what did you learn about God from the book of Exodus? So I hope your family has time to discuss those today. Also, we have our connection activity today. And so what I want you to do is you're gonna get two baskets baskets trash cans buckets whatever you can have at your home that would work and we are going to tape something onto it that says need and one that says want so guys there's things that we need like food and family and a place to live but there are things that we want and I think sometimes we get those confused and we think that we really want something so we need it. But we may not need it, we may just really want it. So this game today is gonna to help us to try and figure out what are things that we really need between what are the things that we just maybe want. 
okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna have these two baskets that say need and want, and you're just gonna crumple up some paper, and you're gonna make a list of things that are needs and wants so that you can decipher them. So an example would maybe be like a bike, a cell phone, a candy bar, your family, water. Hmm, okay, so let's start with water. Hmm, and what we're gonna do is whatever it said, we're gonna toss it into that bucket. So water, hmm, I'm gonna say we need water. That's something we need to live. Hmm. What about being first place on your sports team? You need that, right? You gotta be first. No, being first place, that's just a want. All right, my friends, so that's our game, and I hope that you have fun doing that with your family. And then I want you to discuss what are some of the things that God has provided for you in the past? What are some needs that you have needed that God gave to you? And then, what are some things that you truly need right now? Maybe not want, but what do you need? And take some time with your family to pray about those things that you need. All right, I look forward to seeing you next week as we continue to zoom into the next book, which is the book of Leviticus.